All right, so before we get started, we're going to read the quote from the great Vince Lombardi. What does it say here? What it takes to be number one. Winning is not a sometime thing, it's an all the time thing. You don't have to win once in a while. You don't have to do things right once in a while. You do them right all the time. Winning is a habit, unfortunately, so is losing. There's no room for a second place. There's only one place in my game, and that's first place. I have finished second twice in my time at Green Bay. Now, I don't ever want to finish second again. There is a second place bowl game, but it, it is a game for losers, played by losers. It is and always have been an American zeal to be first in everything we do. And to win and to win and to win and to win. So on and so forth. But my whole, see, <clears throat> all right, so I'm finna get, get ready to repair this window unit right here. A uh, customer of mine, I think I had a video where his air condition went out, he had a compressor, went out on his air condition, and it was gonna be a couple of days for me to get there and fix it, so they went out and bought air condition. I think actually he had this maybe for a year because I know the warranty is up on this. And sometimes, you know, I get comments saying, you know, it's a waste of time. Might well, might as well, uh, you know, just buy a new unit. But, uh, I mean, that's not the, what the customer wants. True. I mean, I can tell them to, uh, you know, get a new unit. But the customer is the boss, and that's what they want to spend their money on, seeing if we can pay it. Uh, repair it, you know, that's what I do. You know, I like to try to give effort no matter what I do. It's the little things. You know, you can be average, you know what I'm saying? Most average people won't even try, you know, to give it a shot. Uh, and I, I try to look beyond, like say, this is my business, I'm trying to grow my business. I try to look beyond just the simple things. You know, I can be, I mean, today is Sunday, I'm just chilling out, just got through watching a, a basketball game. Um, and I got a couple hours of daylight left, so why not, you know, I'm chilling out anyway. I'm doing what I love to do. I love to do HVAC, so why not pull my uh, torches out and see if I can seal the leak, tap in the system, and, uh, you know, pull a vacuum and charge it up, and hopefully they can get more life out of the system. But, and I'll do that for anybody, but this particular customer, uh, he, I mean, it's a good customer. He, he in an affluent neighborhood, and actually his neighborhood during COVID, all of them sit in their driveway and I have like a little block party where they conversate, and you know they they, they just share they whatever they talk about. It, it is political. They talk about the kids, you know, life, basketball, whatever going on, the weather, whatever they talk about. But. Uh, and that, that, that neighborhood is close. So, and, and he told me, if they sitting out, everybody know that he has this unit. Everybody knew that, you know, his air conditioner was out. They seen my truck pull up a couple times, you know, to, to work on the air conditioning system. So they kind of familiar with Washington AC and heating, you know, out of West Houston, Katy, Texas. So my, my whole thing is, if they air condition go out, he the type of person that will lend them they, this window unit right here. And it's just going to be a conversation piece. If I can't get this uh, up and running, I mean, if they might be sitting in their driveway and say, hey, you know, Washington AC, he fixed that uh, window unit for me. So if any of y'all air conditions, you know, go out, just come by and pick up the unit. And not only that, when you pick up the unit, get Washington AC a call, Washington AC and heat in the car, and have them come out and, you know, uh, diagnose it, give you a second opinion or whatever. So that's my whole thing, yeah. It's not all about, you know, the money sometimes. Sure enough, he's going to pay me for it. And, 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 
and I'm just chilling. I might just drop it off to him. You know, it, it, I was say, like, I do want the money. I mean, that, that's the end goal. I'm in, I'm in business to make money. But at, at the end of the day, sometimes you don't have to take money all the time. You got to look, you know, look beyond sometimes. And sometimes you got to help people out, you know. But, I mean, I won't, either way, I won't lose no sleep over it. So let's see if we can get it, get it repaired. I haven't even op opened it up yet. Uh, I think he showed me where the, you know, where the hole was. He said he wanted, wanted to let it drain a little better, so I think he put it like a self of screw. Put a self type of screw in, in the uh, evaporator coil back here. So. And I'm thinking about buying me one of these too. And uh, so one of my customers, if I can't repair the unit that same day, I can offer them a window unit. kind of refrigerant it take. Hope it take 14 and 8. That ain't not light either. Hopefully that table can hold, hold up on it. Let's see if I can get a shot out of the hole here. So it's right here. You kind of see where uh Kind of see where you pierced it at. Yeah, let's see it right there. So that's where the hole at, right there. See that? Yep, put a screw in there a little bit too long. I definitely think we can repair it, but I think that, uh, like I said, it's not going to be textbook. I'm not going to be purging no lines or anything like that. So, we're just going to uh, probably better lighting over here. Just gonna open it up. Open it up. See where everything is located. says to take R32. I don't even know what R32 is. So I might not be charging it up today. I don't know if that's that stuff they said in Walmart or what.
work trying to get this thing back together. All right. So refrigerant is R32. I don't know who said that. I won't do Walmart said that. I'll probably run to Walmart real quick and see if they got some. if I put off 22 in. All right, so yeah, it's kind of behind here a little bit. So I'm about to clean these fins up. Good, good thing it's not plastic, so I won't burn a hole in. So typically on this application right here, I use a uh, piercing valve and just pierce the line set so I can get in there on the suction line. But I'm going to go ahead and install the valve because these piercing valves over time, they will leak. So I'm going to go ahead and install my own valve right here. Uh, for two reasons also, this is R32 refrigerant. I don't have any of that. Never actually even heard of it. Um, Let me see that. But it's R32. So I'm going to have to do a little more research on that. I mean, it, it, hopefully they have a small can because I think it's on the whole like 11 ounces. Um, so I'm going to see if I can purchase some or see if I can substitute like a 410A or see what kind of oil that holds, so R32 or something, I mean R22. So, this has a little bend and I wish it was kind of straight. But let me see if I can find my marker. So I usually use this to mark. I need something better than that. So 
I still see my mark. So I'm sand that good and use the smallest cutters I have. I'll try and cut it. I only still don't know if I'm gonna be able to make a full turn. I'm gonna pull it good back and I may not be able to change the dryer. I like to just turn mine, tighten it a little bit, turn it a couple times, tighten it a little bit more, turn it. Right. And the next one is about right here. Put that this valve here instead of that piercing valve. Uh, I'll probably just repair the leak, put a little nitrogen in there, and see if I can locate some of that refrigerant tomorrow. So I just got to make sure that uh, the case can set down on it. So I'm going to kind of point it this way and I see I got enough room to put my uh, gauges on there on top. So I'm going to take this off make sure no Schrader valve is inside of here. Which it is. I'm gonna try to go real quick. Like I said, I'm not using any nitrogen or anything like this on this small system, really. I don't have anywhere else to tap in. I could if I want to right here, but it should be okay. Right. So I'm gonna use a zero tip on my torch set. Zero. You know, I just see. Anyway, that's a zero tip. I'll be using that. Got my tank set on five and two, five and ten. Goodness. I 
I'm not gonna be long at all. Just let that cool down and uh, see if we can repair the leak. So I know I'm pretty much leak free here. Y'all can see. So if I'm searching for a leak, I just want to get my mirror kind of diagonal so I can see up under there. All right, so I'm fit to clean up where the uh, the leak is located. So I am going to purge it with a little nitrogen on here because I don't want any of those fins to somehow get, get inside here once I uh, start cleaning it up. Should be able to see the hole. So what I'm using is a knife. Some of these little cutters. We're gonna lose some of the fins and maybe some of this sandpaper. Have to be able to get to it. Safety glasses also, since I'm purging that nitrogen. Okay. Here. A little pinhole right there. So I think I got enough of the core. I'm not gonna be able to braise with that nitrogen in there. That's how the piercing on them. It's not worth it. Alright, let's see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to fix that.
So I gotta be very careful not overheat this flame. And the uh, should be good right there. So there's no plastic or anything around here, so I'm not worried about burning anything up. So I definitely got it. So now just make sure all the nitrogen out of there. I doubt I've seen another pinhole, but we should be good. So I'm gonna hook up my gauges and uh, put some put a nitrogen test on there. All right, so we got the gauge set up for a nitrogen hole. And I'm going to do a leak search with the soap bubbles and I'm going to do a nitrogen hole test on it. Uh, so I don't want to overdo it, so I'm going to look at the design pressure that they have on, on here on the name plate. So they design pressures. The high side is 500. Low side is like 240. Might better put some 14A in this thing. I don't know. So the high side is uh 400. So we can put about 150 or 200 in there. I'm gonna open up the yellow hose is going to my nitrogen, this middle one right here, and then open up, crack the uh, suction. That's, all right, that's two, 273 right there. Still got to put that straighter stem in there. I kind of forgot that. So I got. anything no bubble I'm also leaking search my well by the uh, Schrader port 
but, I, but I'm good down there. Contact Washington AC and Heating. We'll take you all your heating and air conditioning needs. Seven one three five seven zero six five three nine. So it's probably trying to equalize. I'm hanging out at two sixty five right there. That's, should be good to go. Should be good to go. at 265 so unfortunately I'm gonna go ahead and end this video uh, probably just go ahead and post it all I got to do is I mean pull a vacuum try to locate some refrigerant and release the charge on there I think it said it hold like 11 ounces so hopefully I ain't got about no huge bottom I'm gonna do some research or matter of fact y'all can leave some uh, maybe leave your comments and uh, if you know if I can use 14A for this application or what or do I got to go back to the uh, 32 R32 let's see yeah I never heard of that kind of refrigerant though I did a quick google search and it seemed like it's in a bunch of uh, uh, docking unit so I think my pressure just equalizing But it's floating around at 265 area. It, I mean, it, it don't have no leak. But um, either way it go, I mean, it's Sunday night, so I'm, I'm just going to uh, leave the gauges on here and come back in the morning and uh, check it out. I actually ran up the auto zone real quick and, and see if they had it. They only had 134, so no, that's not it. So I'm sure one of our supply houses have it. I can just check it on in the morning. Hopefully, they got a little small can.